All right, we may have some more people joining us, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining our, our Zoom webinar on recordings. My name is Lauren Kaiser. I'm gonna be your host this morning. Justin Botros is our co-host. Um, before we dive in, I just wanna let you know, please feel free to utilize the chat function that you have on the bottom of your Zoom window. If you have any questions, feel free to add them into chat. Um, Justin will try to answer some of the questions in the chat as they occur. And then we'll also pause periodically each time we uh, change topic and we'll pause for questions then as well. So feel free to answer them in the chat, but you'll also have a chance to ask them if you please. All right, so just an overview of what we'll be covering today. Of course, we're going to look at how to record. We're going to talk about manually recording as well as automatic recording. Um, we're going to look at cloud recording versus local recording. We're gonna talk about how you can locate your recordings after you've recorded a meeting. And then of course, we're gonna talk about sharing your recordings and we'll end with more time for questions. All right, so the very first thing um, that you wanna make sure that you've done is enabling recording as an option for your account. So if you've been on Zoom calls before, you've been hosting calls and you realize that you haven't even seen the option to record, it's possible that you don't have that feature turned on on your Zoom account. So this is a setting that you need to go to the web portal to actually enable. And when I say the web portal, I'm talking about the website tcu.zoom.us. Hopefully you visited this website before, but if not, definitely check it out at some point. You can do a lot of stuff from there. We'll spend some time looking at the web portal later on, but tcu.zoom.us, when you go there, you're going to um, have a couple of different options of where you wanna go. So you're gonna click on the button that says settings, and it's going to bring you into a section that looks more or less like this. And in your recording settings, there's this option here that you see on my PowerPoint that says local recording. Um, and you just want to make sure that that is toggled on. Make it so that you have the ability to do a local recording. One other feature I like to point out, because we do get a lot of questions about, well, can I give a student or can I give someone else in my meeting the ability to record? And that also depends on your settings and if you've enabled that. So you'll see here, there is an option that says host can give participant the permission to record locally. So that is something that you can turn on and then you can give individual participants the ability to record your meeting. Um, you know, just be, be careful with that. You don't necessarily want students to have recordings that they could post, um, but there are certain use cases where that might be beneficial for you. So that's where you can find that. Um, they also have the same setting, but for cloud recordings. So I would just suggest making sure that both of those are turned on. Now, having those turned on doesn't mean that you're automatically recording your meetings or anything like that. It's just saying that you have the ability to record. So definitely turn that on again in tcu.zoom.us. All right, so that's the very first thing. So of course we're gonna be looking at how to record, but there are some things to consider before you start recording your meeting. And the biggest part of that is going to be, where are you recording? And that we're going to break down into are we recording locally or are we recording onto the cloud so when we say a local recording what we're talking about is recording onto your actual device so for example this meeting right now i'm using my laptop so a local recording would be recorded onto my laptop cloud recording gets recorded onto one of zoom servers so there's no right or wrong. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you you should always be recording locally or you should always be recording to the cloud. That's gonna be up to you. For some meetings, it might be better to record locally. For some meetings, it might be better for you to record to the cloud. But there are a few differences to consider. So let's talk about some of those. Um, when you record locally, so when you record onto your computer, depending on your settings, and we'll look at these as well, but your recording will be ready very quickly after your meeting. Um, after your meeting ends, usually a little window pops up and it starts processing your recording. And then within a few minutes, you have access to that recording and it is saved on your computer. With the cloud, the recordings aren't always ready as quickly. Um, they will process and then you'll get an email from Zoom when they're ready. Usually it's pretty quick, but I will say, for example, when everyone st uh, started using Zoom back in March and they were getting a lot more traffic than they expected, 
I ran into instances where it took a day or two or even more sometimes to get my cloud recording. So it's not always as quick. Since then it has sort of evened out and I would say usually it's only a few hours before I get my cloud recordings, but it does take longer than a local recording. So time is definitely a consideration. Um, for local recordings, the quality of your recording is going to be kind of the best. So for your local recordings, that recording call excuse me, recording quality is guaranteed. It's not going to be affected by Zoom traffic or anything like that. When you record to the cloud, sometimes the quality can vary a little bit and you don't really have any control over it and you don't know what it's going to be until after you receive your recording. Um, with local recordings, another benefit potentially is that your recordings are stored until you delete them. So that can kind of be a pro and a con because your recordings are stored on your machine. But that also means that you need to make sure that you have enough storage space on your machine for these recordings. Fortunately, the Zoom recordings are pretty small in size. They don't take up a huge amount of space, but they do take up some space. So that's another consideration, the amount of storage that you have on your device. Your cloud recording doesn't take up any space on your device, but cloud recordings are not saved permanently. Uh, and that's super important. If you remember one thing that I say today about cloud recordings, remember that they are not saved permanently. So when you log into Zoom and you look at your cloud recordings, it will tell you currently that the cloud recordings will be saved for 120 days and then they're deleted. So if you are going to record to the cloud, I recommend downloading your recordings and keeping a copy of them on your computer as well so that you don't have to worry about them being deleted. Zoom is really good about sending you reminders. So you'll get a reminder every single day for about seven days telling you that you have a recording that is going to be deleted. So as long as you're paying attention to your email, they're not going to disappear without you knowing about it. You would really have to ignore a lot of emails, um, but they will not be stored permanently. So that is something to know and consider. Um, a flip side of that would be, let's say for some of you, if you are teaching in a classroom on campus, if you're using the teacher station as your only device, if you're not joining from, say, a computer of your own as well, you probably don't want to record locally because you're going to make sure that you're going to need to make sure that you can get that recording off of that computer in the classroom. So cloud recording could be a better solution for you if you are teaching a Zoom session from a device that isn't yours. So just another thing to consider. Um, another item to consider is that with your local recordings, once you've recorded them, they're on your computer. So how can you get them to your participants if you needed to send that cloud recording to someone else? You can still do it, but it's gonna be a little bit more work because you'll need to upload that recording somewhere else like box.com and send it out that way. A nice benefit of the cloud and cloud recordings is that you can actually just get a shareable link and you can send that out. We're gonna look at that later on and some different things that you can do with those shareable links, but they make it really easy for sharing it out. So that's another benefit of cloud recording. Another benefit of cloud recording is that you do get a text transcript automatically. So if you need that for any reason, if you need to have the text of your meeting, you automatically get that with cloud recording. There's not a way to get that with local recording. You would have to have someone manually type it out. So that's a major benefit for cloud recording if you do need any sort of transcript. Another benefit with the cloud recording is you have different view options for recording. So more options when you're recording of what that recording is going to look like after, um, what view it's recorded. Is it just recording your screen? Is it recording the person that's speaking? Is it recording the whole class? Or are you doing three separate recordings? With local recording, you don't really have many choices. It just kind of is what it is. Um, you can choose whether you have active speaker view selected or your gallery view selected, but you can't do multiple recordings, whereas with the cloud, you can. We'll look at that a little bit more when we go into our web portal later on, and you can see some of those different settings and the different options that you can select. So those are some of the main differences between cloud and local recordings. Again, there's no right or wrong, but there are just some different items to consider. So the reason we talk about that before we even go into how to record is that when you select the option to record, that's the first question you're going to be asked. Do you want to record locally or do you want to record on the cloud? So before you set up your meeting to record, you need to have an idea of 
which way you're going to go and why. Again, different, you could set up one meeting to record locally, the next one to record to the cloud, totally fine. Different ones are better in different scenarios. All right. The last thing I just want to show you um, before we move on is how to get support. So if you do run into any trouble along the way at any point, Zoom is supported by IT support. So feel free to contact the IT help desk. We have all of the different methods listed there below. And if you are having an issue when you're in a classroom, so if you are teaching on campus this semester and you're having an issue with anything in the room, that goes through the instructional support team and you can always reach them at extension 7121. And then, of course, the Zoom Support Help Center. They also have some great uh, help articles and things like that, so you can always go back and review. There are a couple that I'll put into the chat at the end of our meeting, just so if you want to review anything we've talked about, you can find most of those options there. All right. So before we switch gears and actually look at Zoom and how we do some of this stuff, I just want to pause to see if we have any questions just about what we've talked so far. Again, if you have questions about things that we haven't gotten to yet, hold on to them for now. But if you have any questions just right off the bat about maybe um, cloud versus local recording, please feel free to unmute yourself or add them in chat. And we'll just pause for questions for just a second. So can we record both locally and in the cloud? Not on the same meeting, no. You have to pick one or the other. All right, well, we'll go ahead and move on. So I'm gonna switch gears here for just a second. All right, we're gonna look at our main Zoom window. So this window that I'm bringing up here, this is our Zoom desktop application. I just need to move my Zoom controls so we can see them. All right, so this is the Zoom desktop application. Hopefully everyone has used this before. Um, if not, you can download it from that same, uh, that same website that we were just talking about, tcu.zoom.us. Um, so this is going to be our, our main desktop application. Um, can everyone see that on my screen? I just want to double check that we're all seeing my Zoom desktop application. Thumbs up, all right. See some head nods, perfect. Okay, so this is going to help us with some of our local recordings. So again, local recording, we're talking about things that are being recorded to our computer. So there are a couple things that I just wanna point out here. So from our main desktop application, on the top right corner here, there's an icon that looks like a gray gear icon. This is for your settings. We're gonna go ahead and click on this. All right, so this is our settings window in Zoom. What we're gonna look at right now is this tab on the left here that says recording. So before you start recording, it's a good idea to know where your recordings are being saved because there's no worse feeling than ending a meeting, thinking it's being recorded and then going, well, where, where is my recording? So in addition to knowing if you're recording locally or not, you need to know where that is being stored. So in our recording settings, right here where it says local recording, it says store my recordings app. So you can see for me, I have my recordings being stored in a folder in my documents folder that says Zoom. So that way I know as soon as I'm done with my meeting, that's where it's gonna be, that's where I can find it if I'm recording locally. If you don't want it to be stored there, you can choose another spot. So where it says open, you can hit open, ah, it's switching my screens, I apologize. All right, well, if you hit open, you can navigate on your computer to choose a new folder um, and choose where you want your Zoom recordings to go. It doesn't matter where you have them saved, it's just important that you know where they're being saved to. Another helpful feature right here is it will show you how much storage you have remaining on your device. So it's really important that your devices aren't getting too full and that you have enough space. If this number is really small and you don't have very much space on your device, that might be enough to persuade you to do cloud recording. So again, either way, but just something to consider. 
here you have some additional options for your local recordings. So if you don't want to have a location that it's always saving to, if maybe you're going to be saving them to different places each time, you do have an option that says choose a location to save the recording after the meeting ends. So that means after the meeting ends, you'll be prompted to choose a location for it to save. I personally think it's easier to just have it set up in advance and know where all of your meetings are going so that that way when the meeting ends, you know, if you're in a hurry to go on to the next thing or leave a room and go somewhere else, you don't have to mess with all of this. It's just going to automatically go. That's my personal preference. It doesn't have to be yours. Uh, so that's another choice that you have here. Another option you have is to record a separate audio file for each participant. Um, again, you may or may not need that. If you're doing maybe some video editing, you might want that. But otherwise, you probably don't need to have that checked. But again, just personal preference and what you need the recording for. But that'll just record what it says, a separate audio file for each participant that speaks. Um, you have another option to optimize it for a third party video editor, generate your local recording video files with a standard format that is compatible with third party video editors, which may increase uh, your file size. And you can add a timestamp if you need to do that. Uh, record a video during screen sharing. So this gets into some of the different view options we have for recordings, um, which you can, which you can change. Again, you have more options for cloud recording, but this is basically saying, do you want to record a thumbnail video, you know, of yourself um, when you are sharing your screen? And then just some different options for the placement and then an option to keep temporary recording files. A lot of these have little question marks next to them. So if you need more clarification about what the option is, you can hover over it and it'll tell you. So again, these are just our options for local recording that are taking place on this device. Um, you'll notice that for cloud recording, our options are all on the web. So when I hit this button that says manage on web, it will take us over to tcu.zoom.us. Um, so let's actually go ahead and go there. I already have this window open, so I'm just gonna switch manually here. All right, let me close out of this. Wonderful. So this is our tcu.zoom.us website that we've mentioned a couple times. Um, so what we're gonna take a look at is our settings. Okay. So in our settings, we have a couple of different options here. Um, we, you'll notice that above the settings tab, we have an option for recordings. We're not gonna go in there just yet. We're gonna stick in settings. And in settings, we also have an option for recording. So these are our recording settings. So this might look familiar. This is what we looked at on one of our very first slides about recording. So this is again, what you need to make sure is turned on and enabled if you wanna be able to record your meetings. All right, so local recordings, we've talked about local recordings, but here are our options for our cloud recordings. Now, again, what I have set right now, this is just what I have at the moment. It, my settings are not necessarily the right settings. It's different for everyone. There's no right or wrong. It just depends on what you need for your recording. So don't necessarily go in and try to mimic mine or anything. They might not be right for what you're trying to do. So um, cloud recordings allow hosts to record and save the meetings in the cloud. So again, we're not gonna go through all of these, but these are just some of the options that you have. Um, so although you can't record a local recording and a cloud recording at the same time, if you are looking for multiple recording options, cloud recording is really nice because you'll see here, you can choose to record the active speaker view with the shared screen, or you can choose to record the gallery view in the shared screen active speaker, gallery view, and shared screen separately. And you can actually select all of these. Um, so that is a good way to get multiple recordings. And you have to do it through the cloud, you can't do that through local, but there are a lot of different options here. Now again, some of these are similar to what we saw in our local recordings, just options that we would need to check in cloud recordings. All right. Um, we also have an option for automatic recording. So this, up to you, I probably wouldn't turn this on. Basically, this is just saying, okay, we're gonna automatically record every single meeting as it starts. The reason I don't necessarily recommend that is well, you probably don't need every single meeting that you ever do to be recorded. Also, do you really want your meetings to start recording as soon as you start them? 
you might start your meeting five minutes early and there's just dead space and maybe you don't really have a way of editing it. So that might not be the best way to do it. I'm gonna show you how you can set up meetings to automatically record for individual meetings. Um, and we'll take a look at that. I'll also show you how to just manually start and stop a recording as well. Um, one feature that I do like, again, completely up to you, but this one here for only authenticated users can view cloud recordings. So we're gonna look at how to share cloud recordings in just a little bit as well. But one thing to know is when you share a cloud recording, you're gonna get an option for a shareable link. So this is just asking you, okay, can anyone see your link or do users have to authenticate? And what that means is are people having to log in, in this case with their TCU accounts, in order to see the link? So a lot of times that's a good feature to have turned on. If you are trying to send it outside of TCU, then that's not a feature you'd want to have turned on. But I know a lot of professors, you know, just want to send things to their students and they don't want people outside of TCU to have access to those recordings. All right. So again, just some different options here for recording. So I just want to be sure that you know where those are. So again, settings and then recording, and you can change those. All right. So let's take a look at how we can set up meetings to record automatically. So depending on how you're making your meetings, you can do it a few different ways. If you're making your meetings through this Zoom uh, website, you can do it here, or you can do it through the desktop application that we were looking in a minute ago. Since we're here, why not just do it here? So we're going to go into meetings. I'm going to click on meetings, and I'm going to hit this option that says schedule a meeting. Perfect. So I'm not going to mess with the rest of this. We'll just label this test record meeting so we know what it is. And I don't really need to worry about the date and time or all of that. So we really just want to look at our recording options. All right. So under here, under this meeting options section at the bottom, and again, you'll also get to this if you're scheduling through the desktop applications. I believe it's under the Google drop-down menu that says advanced options. So you go down there and you'll have this button here that says automatically record meeting. So you can click automatically record meeting and you'll notice as soon as you click that, you get two options here. So it says, do you want to record on the local computer or do you want to record in the cloud? So again, no right or wrong, just wherever your preference is. And then you hit save. So what that's going to do is when you start this meeting, as soon as you start the meeting, it is going to start recording. So that's one way that you can start a recording, by setting up your meeting to automatically record and then simply starting your meeting. So I'm gonna go ahead and press save, and voila, I would start this meeting and it would start recording. So that's one way that you can start recording a meeting. The other option you have is through Zoom itself. So I'm gonna minimize this window and go back to Zoom. Let me maximize this. All right. Um, so you guys, at the bottom of my screen, you can see my different Zoom controls. So you'll notice that here, I have an option that says pause and stop recording. So right now it says pause and stop because we already have a recording going. I can tell that it's recording because on the top left here, it says recording and it has kind of a red blinking light. So we can see that it's recording. It also has the pause and stop option here. So if I wanted to pause my recording for a little bit, maybe we're about to have the discussion and I don't want that part recorded, I can pause that and then I can just resume recording again afterwards. Or if I just wanted to record, you know, the beginning of the class and I don't need the rest of it, I can press stop. If I hadn't have already started recording, this wouldn't be here and my controls at the bottom, instead of saying pause and record, it would be a little circular recording icon and I would click on that to start recording. And if I hadn't set up my preferences already, if it wasn't recording automatically, I would then be prompted to choose if I wanted to record locally or record in the cloud. So you're always going to be prompted to record locally or in the cloud, and you're always going to have to choose. So those are how you can actually record. So the next thing we're going to look at is how to find your recordings after you have recorded. Um, but I do want to pause for just a second to see what questions we have so far, if any. Any questions so far? Again, feel free to unmute yourselves if you'd like to ask a question or you can add them into the chat. 
If you set the meeting to record automatically for one specific meeting, if there's, say, students in the room before you, will it start when they start the meeting or when you join? Um, I believe it should start, well, it probably depends on some of your other settings. Um, if you have enabled join before host, when your students join, I'm thinking that it might start when they do. Let's see. Um, okay, so Charles has confirmed when students join, if you have join before host. So if you have it set up so that people can join before the host, then it would start recording when they join because that would start the meeting. If you don't use enable join before host, then it would start when you start the meeting. And Charles has suggested not using join before host. So, any other questions? All right. Well, then we will move on. So you've recorded your meeting either to the cloud or locally, and now you need to find your meeting or find your recording rather. So a couple different ways to do this. I'm going to start by going back to our Zoom application here. Let me just minimize this. All right. So I'm on our Zoom desktop application, and one of the ways that you can find your meetings. Move my Zoom controls out of the way. Across the top here, we have home, chat, and meetings. This is probably the easiest way. If you go into meetings, you will have options for upcoming and recorded. So if you go into this recorded section here, you'll see all of your meetings that you've recorded. And what's really nice about finding them this way is it doesn't matter if they were recorded locally or on the cloud. So for example, um, this meeting, this was our session from yesterday. This one was recorded on my computer. And the way that I can tell is because when I look at this, it shows me the recording path. So I can tell that this is where it was set up on my computer. It's in my folder, in my documents, in Zoom. And it'll say open, and if I click on open, it will actually bring up that location on my computer to my exact recording. So I can find them just like that. Um, if I recorded to the cloud, it would look like this. So it says recording path and you can tell it's a website because it has that HTTPS colon slash slash and a web address. And if I click open, it will actually bring me to that section in cloud. So those are the two ways that you can find it. Um, let's actually open this for just a second. So again, this is a local recording. So I'm going to hit open. So this is what my local recordings would look like. So this one here is the one from yesterday. It's dated, it's also highlighted, so that's how I can tell. I'm gonna just double click on that. So these are all of the different files that it saved. Now I manually saved the chat, it doesn't save that automatically, um, but you can see the different things that it saved. So it has an audio only file, um, the chat, and this is the video file. So that .mp4, that's what you can look for to identify the correct video file. And you can see it's pretty small. It's um, 378 megabytes, so pretty small, not even half a gig, so not taking up too much space. So it makes it nice and easy for me to find my meeting. So this would be my recording from yesterday. All right, let's move this again. And let's take a look at the web links. Okay. So in that same section here, this one is my recording path from, from the web. So if I hit open, it redirects me to tcu.zoom.us, and then we're in this recording section, and it's showing me that recording. Um, you can also navigate to them without going to that specific meetings tab and clicking them individually if you just want to see all of them. If you specifically want to see all of your um, cloud recordings, you can come into this recording section. Again, this is just on tcu.zoom.us. And you can see here, they also have it broken down into cloud recordings and local recordings. So here they actually have it separated out. On the desktop application, they're all together in chronological order. So whatever is easier for you, this one here shows me my cloud recordings. So these are all meetings of mine that were recorded on the cloud. And then these local recordings, these are my ones that were recorded locally. And it's still nice because it does tell you exactly where they are. So if you're ever not sure where, where is my meeting, it'll tell you exactly right here. So you don't have to worry about losing them 
But again, a best practice would be to make sure that you've set up your folders so that you know where they are. Um, you can also filter by a date. So if you're trying to find a meeting from say a month ago, you can type in a specific range. You can only see 30 days at a time. All right, so now we know how to record. We know how to record manually and automatically, and we know how to find our recordings. So the next thing you're probably interested in is, well, how do I share my recordings? Because that's probably the main reason you're recording them, right? In order to share them with people. Um, so I will say the cloud makes it a bit easier to share than recording locally. So it just depends. There are also some neat things that you can do with the cloud recordings that you can't really do the same way with the local recordings. So I'll show you for an example here. This one, my first one here that just says Lauren Kaiser's Zoom meeting. This was just the test meeting I did, so not important content. So we're gonna use this one for our example. Okay, so initially after your recording is ready, you'll get an automatic email from Zoom if you're using cloud recording, and it'll just let you know that your recording is ready and it'll give you a link to your recording. So you can also get to it that way if it's recent. Um, and you will also get a link that you can share with others straight from your email. So that's one option. But if it's been a little bit, you don't know where that email is, you can always just come right in here. And when you're looking at your cloud recordings, there's this option right here that says share. So what this does when you press share is it will give you a shareable link. Um, oh, sorry, this one gives you settings for your shareable link, not the shareable link itself. Um, so let's look through this. This is going to be your different options that you can change before you share a link with people. This is gonna say, okay, do you wanna share it publicly so that anyone with the link can watch the content? Or do you wanna set it up so that only authenticated users can view TCO accounts only? Again, this just means that in order to watch your link, people will have to sign in using their TCO credentials. So that's one option. Um, I personally like that, but it's up to you. You can also add um, an, like an expiration date to the link, so maybe your students, you only give them maybe a week, maybe two weeks to watch the video. And if they don't watch it within those two weeks, you know, tough. Um, so if you want to do that, you can add an expiration link by turning that on and adding your dates. This one is actually really important. So viewers can download. By default, this is turned off. So by being turned off, what it's saying is viewers just have the link. They can watch the link. That's all they can do. They don't have any of those extra files like what you saw on the local recordings. They don't have access to the audio transcript. Um, they can't download the file to save it permanently. They can just view it. The reason, another reason why this is important, and we're about to look at how to do it, one of the neat features of the cloud recording links is you can actually set a playback duration. So for example, let's say that you had your meeting set up to record automatically. And maybe there are 10 minutes in the beginning where it's not really content that people need. Maybe you were having a conversation with someone who is in the room with you and you just don't really need that to be shared. So you can set a playback time where you cut out the 10 minutes. And again, I'll show you how to do this. Um, and when you send the link, people don't see what you cut out. They only see the playback time that you set. However, if you select the option where viewers can download, people can download the original version. So they would see everything at the beginning that you cut out. So that's something to keep in mind. If you've made changes to the playback or anything like that, you probably don't want people to be able to download it. Um, ignore this on-demand registration. That's gonna be for webinars and stuff. We don't need that. Um, this other one is for passcode protection. So what it does is Zoom is going to generate a random passcode and people would need this passcode in order to watch the recording. Um, so again, up to you if you want that. You can edit it to make it your own thing, but just keep in mind if you do have this turned on, when people try to click on your link, they're going to be prompted to enter a passcode. Um, so you'll need to make sure that you provide this to people if you choose to use that option. All right. Um, if you need to see display detailed information, you can click here and you'll see more information about the meeting. Okay, so those are your options for your link. So what we're gonna do is we are actually going to click on this. So when you click on your meeting, you'll see right here, here's the button for copy shareable link. So I just click it, it says it's been copied, 
So all I have to do now is go and paste it somewhere. So I could pull up an email to my class, or if you're using TC online, you could post it in like an announcement or something like that. Um, so you just have to copy the link by clicking copy, and then you paste it somewhere. Um, you also have your option here to download your files. So again, you wanna download your files um, or else they'll be deleted eventually after 120 days. You also have your button to share right here. So again, it just brings up the same thing. Okay, so let's look at that playback feature that I mentioned. So I'm gonna go ahead and click, to get to this, you have to actually click on the video clip and it's gonna open a new window here. Okay, so we have some different options here that are nice. So this is just a 14 second video. It's just me saying test one, two. All right, so it's about 14 seconds. I probably start speaking around three seconds. We'll pretend like we actually needed that. So what you would do to set a playback range, these little scissors right here. You just click on your little scissors. When you highlight over them, they say set playback range. So I click on that. This window comes up, it's really helpful. It says viewers will be able to watch the recording only within the set playback range through the sharing link. This will not affect the original recording. If you enable downloads, viewers will have access to the full length recording and all relevant files, including audio transcripts, chat, and subtitles. So again, just something to keep in mind. If you want them to have all of that, then you would want to enable downloads. If you don't want them to have all of that, don't enable downloads. Um, so you're going to click got it. Okay, so then once we've selected our playback range, we get this blue bar and at each side it has arrows. So you'll see when we hover over it, it's starting at zero and I can say, all right, I'm going to click and drag to about three seconds. Why not? And at the end, maybe all the way to the end is good. In this case, I'm going to just shorten it. Let's say about 11 seconds. So you can see here the beginning now, it's not blue, it's a gray bar and the end also is a gray bar. So what I'm doing is I'm removing what's in gray. So I'm not, people aren't gonna see the gray part, they're only gonna see the blue part. So in this case, it's three seconds to about 11 seconds. So if that's what I like, that's what I want them to see, I hit save. All right, so then that's been saved. And now when I go to share my link, Let's get back. Um, when I go back to share the link, we'll go back in a second. It'll just be that new part that I've set now. One other thing I want to show you while we're here, um, this CC, this is really nice. It's for closed captions. This is another option that, again, you only have for cloud recording. It doesn't work with local recording. Um, if you've ever looked in your audio transcript in Zoom before, it shows up on the side right here. So I didn't type this in. This is automatic. Um, and again, this is just a short 10 second video. I was testing audio. So this is what I said in the recording. That's exactly right. If there was a mistake, you can press this little pencil and you can edit the text to make it correct, but it will automatically match up the text to when it's said in the video. So if you do have any students who would need closed captions or anything like that, they'll have the option to just click um, that show subtitle. And then when I play my video now, so you can actually see that so, uh, the subtitles, the captions pop up, it shows who's saying it, and it has the test recording and the text that I said right at the bottom. So really helpful. All right, so that is how you can change your playback option. I'm going to go back. Let's see. So I just clicked on the top of the title of the meeting, and then I can say copy shareable link. So now that shared link would just be the portion that I had edited. All right. So what questions do you have so far? We'll pause for questions again, and then I will show you a way that you can share your local recordings. It's gonna be a little bit um, more involved. You'll have to use another program. I recommend using box.com, so we'll do a sample with that. Um, but what questions do you have so far?
If you guys haven't been looking at the chat, it does look like um, Charles has posted some helpful links there to some different Zoom support articles. So I definitely recommend taking a look at those. Um, just so you guys know, if anyone's interested in saving the chat, you're like, you're not gonna be able to copy down all of these uh, links right now, totally fine. On your chat, if you go to chat and then you'll see a button that looks like this with three dots, if you click on that, you have an option for save chat. Your chat will be saved to the same place your recordings are set to save to. So feel free to save the chat if you want to. Um, no, we will, uh, just looking at the chat, we will not be looking at the on-demand registration required. So I believe that's more for our webinars. Um, okay. All right. Well, then we will go ahead and move on to how you can share a local recording. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back into my recordings tab here. And let's see, I'm gonna find one that was recorded locally. This one from yesterday, we can do that. Um, all right, so we know where it is, we have our file. So again, you're gonna to have to go to a third party website. So we're gonna use Box. If you haven't used Box.com before, it is a wonderful website. Everyone has a Box.com account just with your TCU credentials automatically. Um, so let's go there. I'm gonna open a new tab. I'm just gonna to go to Box.com. And I'm gonna press continue. Now I'm already logged into some TCU websites, so that's why I'm not having to enter all of my credentials here, but usually you would have to enter them and sign in. Okay, so this is Box. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new folder. So I'm gonna go over here to new, and I'm gonna create a folder, and I'm going to call this Zoom Meeting Upload. Now you can call it whatever you want. If you wanna make a separate folder for maybe each of your classes and you're gonna share the folder with your class, you can do that. Um, I'm gonna show you how to use a shared link that you would send out, but you can do different things, up to you. So I'm just gonna leave all of this as it is. I'm gonna say create. All right, so I have my folder created. I'm gonna click on my folder and I need to upload something. So I'm gonna go ahead and click my upload button. You can also drag and drop files, that's an option too. But because we have looked at where our Zoom files are saved, we know where to find them. So I'm gonna go here, let's see. We'll set the one from yesterday. All right, I'm gonna click choose. And, you know, I am going to click a different file. Now this isn't our video file. We're gonna pretend that it is. The reason I'm not going to choose the video file right now is because it would take a little bit of time to upload onto Box and I wanna be able to show you guys how to create the link. So we'll see if I'm able to upload this one. We'll just pretend that it's the meeting file, but it's the exact same process. Just for the sake of time, I'm choosing something that will upload more quickly. Perfect. So. If this is my file that I want to share with my students, one option that I have is I can either add people. So right here where it says collaborators, you can actually invite people to this folder and they can find it that way. I personally like to do shared links. So what I do is I hover over here and then there's this little button that looks like a link and it says create shared link. And you can kind of ignore that top part. You don't have to invite people. It's just this shared link part that we're interested in. So if you don't need to change any of your settings, you can just click copy and then go paste it either in an email or on D2L or wherever your class is gonna find it. So it's very similar to the process for sharing links through Zoom. It's just that extra step that you have to upload it from your computer to somewhere else. Um, you have additional options here. So who do you wanna be able to see the link? By default, it's set to people in your company. So this is just like that authenticated users can join. People in your company is going to be people with a TCU email address who can log in. This option here is going to be people can view and download. You can change both of these. So people in your company, if I click on this, I can change it so that it just says people with the link um, or can view and download. You can make it so that they can only view it or both, up to you. You have some additional link settings here. 
So here you can, this is just like that expiration. So you can set an expiration date if you want. Um, again, if you want people to be able to download it or not, and then a direct download link, which means they could just click that link and it would download directly. So different options there. So very, very similar, it's just, again, if it is saved directly onto your computer, you have to get it somewhere else. There's not a way to just share it from your computer to other people. All right. So we have covered a lot of stuff. We've looked at where our recordings are. We've talked about some of the differences between cloud recordings and local recordings, how to share those recordings and trim those recordings and passwords. That is pretty much all of the content that we have for recording and managing recordings. Oh, let me show you one other thing. And then we'll just open up the rest of the time for questions. Um, that process that we just went over for box.com, we actually have a support article that outlines all of that on our IT website. So it's just it.tcu.edu slash Zoom. So all of our Zoom stuff gets posted here. So if you want to watch any of the other webinars that we're doing this week, eventually they will be posted on this website. We also have our Zoom Basics video on this website. And then right here, um, this Learn to Use Zoom. There are several links here for different topics that have different tutorials or guides on how to do different things. So that process we just went through about uploading a local recording to Box, we have an article here, uploading a locally recorded file to Box. And if you click on that, it will take you through step-by-step -step instructions. Now this one, we went into meetings and found our recording that way. Um, but it is a step-by-step -step guide on the exact same thing. So how to find your recording, which recording is your video file, how you can upload it to Box, step-by-step -step with pictures and easy, hopefully easy to follow um, instructions. So a guide there that you can refer back to. Again, that's it.tcu.edu slash Zoom. Okay, um, let's see. One other, let me see, let me just show you a couple other helpful articles. Um, recording layouts. Um, so one thing you might be interested in is just those recording layouts. We did talk about some of that when we looked at our cloud recording settings in the web portal, but this also just talks about like if you're locally recording, how your video is going to show up with which shared screen. So it just, it just depends on if you've selected like active speaker view or your gallery speaker, or I'm sorry, not gallery speaker, gallery view, your recording will mirror some of your selections. So I'm gonna post this into chat in case anyone wants to review it and change this. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about when I said like gallery view or speaker view, um, on my screen right here on the top right corner, you can see gallery view. So if I click gallery view, I can see um, the gallery of everyone. And if I click speaker view, it goes to the active speaker. Um, in this case, I have spotlighted my own video, so it will stay on, on me until I cancel that. And then it would go to whoever else was speaking. So if you're doing a local recording, what you have selected there, if it's gallery view or speaker view, that will select what you see on your recording at the end. All right, so that is all I have. So let me stop sharing and I will cancel my spotlight so that it can go back and forth to other people and we'll open it up for questions. So again, feel free to unmute your microphones or you can use the chat feature. Any questions at all from anybody? All right, well, that is it. We're wrapped up just a little bit early. Um, if you do have any questions, again, you can feel free to reach out to the IT Help Desk if you're having an issue. I'm happy to answer questions as well. Um, thank you guys so much for attending. I really appreciate it. And again, feel free to re uh, refer back to our website if you um, want to see any of the other webinars that we're doing the rest of the week. All right. We'll go ahead and end it then. Thank you all so much. Have a good rest of your day.